Previously on our Tasmanian adventure. Oh. Where? Where? How worried Santiago would be today. Very nice. Like me, no. And as Gaz Gaz looked on like some council worker. You got a little untidy. <laughs> Fucking hell, why? Why? Touted as one of the most difficult four wheel drive tracks in Australia. His 200 plus kilo deadlifts. And now it was Rocket's turn. Just as long as one of those riders wasn't me. How good are we? Where are we, boys? Look, look how far away I am. Man. What has he done? <laughs> Notorious motorcycle gang from Victoria. Silver! As the day we were having. Any in mainland by the Deandra Casto channel. As for poor Gaz Gaz, butler Mike, Dr. Dylan. <laughs> First to push his bike. I still have a clutch. Cush drives, f his bearings, f Doesn't get any harder, but it just keeps going. How hard could it be? Welcome. Tasmaniacs! Episode 6! Gaz is... Cush drives his bearings are fucked. His bike's fucked. G'day everyone, artist Wayne here. And rest assured, no bikes were harmed in the making of this film. However, sometimes you just have to show your bike who's boss. And in this case, it's Gaz Gaz's mighty DR650. Well, the bike's been garried uh, for the third time today. What happened? You got tomorrow. I don't know. I've never seen that before. What can you say? What was it your fault? It's hard to say if it was my fault. You're always looking for drama, always for your followers. Actually, so what can you say? someone did mention drama. We need drama. We need drama. And I think it was. Should we? Was it Adrian? Was it Adrian? I think it was Adrian. Poor Gaz Gaz. All he could do was call a tow truck. It doesn't look sincere. It doesn't look sincere. As for the rest of us, well, there was nothing we could do <laughs> for poor Gaz Gaz. So in the end, we just f off and left him. Gaz's Kush Drive on his DR650 was 100% snafu'd. But don't feel sorry for him, because his mate Dylan, a local of Tasmania, stayed there to keep him company. Oh, scratch that, it appears he's f***ed off as well. And I'm by myself. Whilst Gaz was waiting for a tow truck, we were heading towards Bishano, with a special stop planned along the way. But first we needed lunch. And as for poor Gaz Gaz, well, he was still waiting for that tow truck. Get a DR, they said. It'll be fun, they said. They're unstoppable, they said. After lunch, Brendo Bing, Santiago, Adrian and I made our way to Wineglass Bay. A destination that is definitely at the top of a traveller's Tassie bucket list. The bay is part of the Freycinet Peninsula, an outcrop of wild, pristine coastland on Tasmania's east coast. Encompassed within the Freycinet National Park, it is considered one of the top 10 beaches in the world. And poor old Gaz Gaz was missing out. Mighty DR has let me down. Why did you let me down? Poor Gaz had passed through the five stages of grief and had finally arrived at acceptance. As for us, I'm not sure if we thought his visit to Wineglass Bay all the way through. It's day three on the Freshenay walk. Only Brendo and I left. We've been walking for what seems like forever. I think I've mentioned it before. Walking in enduro boots is certainly not the easiest mode of transport. Day five on the Wineglass Bay walk. I caught up to Santiago and, and Adrian. Run out of water. Brendo's up ahead. Run out of water. Yeah. It's a hard slog. Meanwhile, saved. They're fantastic. <laughs> Want to buy a bike? While that was going on, we were still walking. One last push. One last push. This was becoming the holy f***ing grail of bush walks. And then, like a miracle, it appeared. The beautiful wine glass bay.
on this uh, recording for prosperity if it's okay to get by you. Yeah. It's all part of the fun. Gaz's plan now was to get he and his DR650 over to Dylan's house, which from memory I think was about 70 kilometers away. Campania driver. <laughs> Remove his rear axle, which was completely seized, fix the problem and join us somewhere tomorrow. Don't ask me where he got the pie from, I've got no f***ing idea. As for us, we survived our walk in the beautiful Freycinet National Park and we had arrived in Bichino. We were now 185 kilometers northeast of Hobart on the Tasman Highway. In this beautiful sleepy seaside town, which is primarily a fishing port and a beach resort. It was time to check in. Santiago. Uh, Thanks. Well, I couldn't speak for everyone, but today had been another fantastic day here in Tassie. And as we were checking out our accommodation, Gaz Gaz had already arrived at Dylan's house and was proceeding with Operation Remove Axle. Super Legera swing arm. <laughs> Holy f It's about a mil, mil and a half gouge. Yeah, that's just saving weight. What do you reckon, B? Where is he? F <laughs> oh. Oh, fuck. That bearing still seems to be half intact. Yeah. I'll get them all replaced. Okay, so this is good news. Those rubbers. Most of them. No, there's one going to be one here. They're okay. Yeah, they're okay. Do you only so need a bearing? It's a trip in to get bearings. Well, that'll be fine. Can I borrow a car? Be back tomorrow? on the road tomorrow. Oh, I'll take you to town. Cool. I'll be back on the road. Yeah, by tomorrow. Fantastic news because we were really missing Gaz. <laughs> we're here without Gaz. <clears throat> <laughs> Look, he's even laughing. <laughs> Good morning, fellow adventure riders, and just have a look at the weather that was served up to us on this fine Monday morning. And I'm sure Gaz Gaz was getting up early in anticipation of having someone install new bearings in his DR650's rear wheel. He was probably chomping at the bit and couldn't wait to join his fellow riding buddies who, <laughs> who I must say were missing him dearly. Oh, and by the way, does anybody remember whose brakes were squealing yesterday? Come on boys, uh, let's go check, uh, check Santiago's brakes. Uh, here we go. On outside, it's two Teneros here. He looks a little concerned and worried. Oh, Ooh. I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but that would explain the squealing sound. <laughs> Artis, Artis Wayne here, we're back inside. Oh. Uh, he says he's not homeless. Look, he's just having it. <laughs> <laughs> he looks homeless, but he is. <laughs> let's just um, let's check out if uh, Artis Wayne. if we can get Santiago out of trouble. And uh, it appears that some people think ahead and they know that they're riding with people who can't What's think for this? themselves. 
See, this is the front. You're not taking my front brakes. Set of rears. They, these would be the most expensive rear brakes. You don't know what's more Australia. expensive at the moment. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Let's start it. the bidding off. One hundred dollars. Fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he can put them on. The last time I conducted this operation on my bike in Victoria, I used part of my chain breaker to knock out the brake pin, but unfortunately, I didn't bring it with me this time. I've called on Bing. Because I, somehow I don't think we're going to have what we need. In the end, it was Santiago that had something we could use. It's the only tool he carries. One single Allen key. Now all we needed was a hammer. That'll do. Purchase on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, B. It looks like metal on metal. This is only for the camera. This is yeah. proof. Here, tighten it up. Bit more. Bit more. <laughs> That's it. That was it, boys and girls. Now we could ride. A couple of kilometres down the road from Pishino and Bing had us on a dirt track that looked absolutely brilliant. Well, it did for at least 20 metres until we came to our first fallen tree. Another promising draw of about 12 seconds. Yeah, I know, it's looking good. Bing's uh, starting the cuts now. <sighs> See if we can get through. Santiago's doing something. Look. Not so fast. It's like painting. It's like painting. Oh, and steady. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. You're really good at that. You should do all of them. We're here in Tasmania, um, riding around Tasmania. We also have a tree lopping business. Um, <laughs> we have a deal today. And like Henry Ford once said, chop your own wood and it'll warm you twice. I know we weren't chopping firewood, but we were certainly warming up now on this fine Tassie morning. And here I was, hoping there'd be no more fallen trees. I think this time we made it a further 40 metres down the track. If we have to keep moving obstacles out of the way, we'll never make our destination. Which was the pub in the paddock. Licensed since 1880, it's one of the oldest pubs in Tasmania. And we were travelling there via the Ben Lomond National Park. Yeah, we, I reckon that one did. Now that definitely was enough strenuous activity. It was time for more riding and less heavy lifting. One of us really needs to start bringing a chainsaw. And it was here that I started to think we were going to be in for a lot of this today. And I was right. It's almost as though a mini tornado has ripped through this place just to make it harder for us. And just as we almost forgot what it was like to have open road in front of us we had open road in front of us this is exactly what we needed because like i said earlier we were heading to the pub in the paddock via the ben Lomond national park so the boys and i could ride up the spectacular jacob's ladder it's quite possibly the most hair raising and impressive alpine road in tasmania this famous road has a series of switchbacks creating a spectacular journey to a breathtaking destination and this was one ride our buddy Gaz Gaz wouldn't want to miss so as we were enjoying this track 
He was scrambling to get his PR650 fixed so he could join us along the way. Moving trees around, we were continually getting our boots wet. Look at that blue, beautiful red dirt. I think we got to launch off the, the pipe. Yeah, we must be able to go see how deep that is. Over there. Yeah. I don't know if we're doing this one. Go and walk over there, bro. Deepest there. Big rock there. Fair bit of pool. Yep. Oh yeah, we were going through. It's only worth it if you work for it.
Yeah, go back. Your wheel, well, your wheel isn't even on the ground. When you got bloody Santiago, anyone would think he belongs to Colombian royalty. The way he throws orders around, bloody hell! Push, push. Good try, bro. There was a lot of pressure there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How good's my bash plate? <laughs> Equally as good as your ball sack rocket because it really took a hit there. Oh, we have to lift his front end up. Ready? Right up. Ready? God. That's a kick out, kick out. Go. Here we go, what's next? More logs. I guess it was fair to say it was either going to be logs or water, or both. And for those that don't know, I f***ing hate logs. Which is surprising because today I was doing really well. I was the self-proclaimed log king. But I'm sure my luck was going to run out soon. Hang on, my beautiful arrow exhaust. At least I did better than Adrian. I thought you were doing better than lying, mate. Tip it up. Okay. 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 And just like that, there was another water crossing. I guess it was to be expected. The whole day was logs, water, logs, water, logs, and now water. This one, however, looked a little deeper. And stuff turning around and going back, we were chomping at the bit to get to Jacob's Ladder. Plus, we had no idea where Gaz Gaz was or if he'd even be able to join us today. And to find out if we make it across, you'll have to wait for episode seven. So hit the like and subscribe button, because I'm artist Wayne Dowson, and this is Tasmaniacs!